My channel is famed for bringing the joys of my country's greatest computer, the ZX Spectrum, to a worldwide audience. Some leave perplexed, some baffled, bothered and befuddled, but plenty are curious and interested. Hopefully anyway. But of course there's something I'm sure everyone wants to know. What's shit on the Spectrum? It's a classic YouTuber question, people aren't so much interested in the good games as they are the utter shit ones, whether it's Dr Jekyll and Mr Hyde, or Slaughter Sport, or Big Rigs, or whatever. And if you want to see what's shit on the Spectrum, well, I've got something for you today. Not just any shit game for the ZX Spectrum, but the game that is, by common consensus, the worst game ever released for the ZX Spectrum. And I assure you, it is right up there with any of the more famous shit games I've just mentioned. In fact, it surpasses them. Folks, here's Squidge from 1987, and may the Lord have mercy on me for showing you this. And of course I'd like to know as much about the game as possible. So without any further ado, it's time to get Squidgy! Ugh. So the background. Here's World of Spectrum, one of the oldest and biggest specy sites on the internet, with an archive entry for most every piece of specy software out there, and the ability to score them out of 10. Naturally there's a top 100 where you'll find all the classics, games like Sir Fred, Quasitron and Head Over Heels. And of course the three games that share the number one spot. According to WOS visitors that's R-Type, The Great Escape and Fairlight, all scoring an average 8.54 out of 10. Pick anything to play from this list, and chances are it'll be pretty damn good. And of course you can check out the other end, the visitor's bottom 100. Here's just a few examples of what you'll see there. Gee, I'm sure you'll agree with me that just those three were pretty horrid looking. And it's on this list that you'll find Squidge. It's rated as the number one worst game on the spectrum, with an average score of 1.65. It is on its own, 300th points ahead of the number two game, Cosmic Pirate, a game so horrific and incomprehensible that you could easily believe it to be the worst game of them all. But no, Squidge is above or below even this. We can't put it off anymore, I suppose. You just have to see it. Here's the cover first. A frightening looking bird and an inlay telling you all about a once happy creature flying around in the days before the population holocaust. And then the food ran out. Now Squidge, Skidge, whatever, is this mutant creature who must feed, must satisfy his draining life force. Gee, Squidge sounds like a freaking evil monster living in a post apocalyptic hell. Either that or Basildon. Ok, so this is the game. You play as the giant bird in the middle. And yes, we're playing Squidge. You might be confused and wondering why there's nothing happening. Can you figure it out? <laughs> yep. In Squidge, you cannot move. At all. It certainly seems like you should be able to move. And hell, let's look back at the inlay. There's controls for moving, there's a tip section that says you have to guide Squidge through an underground labyrinth to find pieces of a tree, but these controls just don't work. This is the point where I remind you that this game was commercially released and sold, in shops or on mailing lists or whatever, for money. You thought that Big Rigs was unfinished with its non-functioning AI and buildings you could pass through? <laughs> well you could move in that game. You can't hear. At least you're scoring points while doing nothing though. No wonder it's rated as the number one worst game. People must have put this game on, seen that you couldn't move and recoiled in horror. It's a new low of course, the most broken game I've ever seen and literally unplayable. Or is it? Now there is indeed a way to play this game, but to show it I'll have to explain something that some people might not be familiar with. The poke. This basic command has a lot of functions, but in the main it was used to cheat in games, or more accurately, as a catch-all term for hacking your game. If you've ever used an action replay or a game genie then this is quite similar. Getting them to work can be tricky, but there are ways. 
The first is to enter a big load of code in BASIC, presumably copying it from a magazine, and Len won the game. If all goes well, the game will load as normal. If you've done something wrong, then it'll probably crash. That's the tricky way of doing it. The easier way was to use the multi-face add-on to freeze a program once it was loaded into memory, and enter a much simpler one-line poke, at these were called multi-face pokes, or to use pre-made pokes that you'd usually find at the end of a magazine's cover tape and load your game in from there. Having done this, you can play your game with infinite lives, invincibility or whatever. Of course, in the case of this game, you have to poke it in order to actually bloody play it. Anyway, there's a simple one-line poke for Squidge that fixes this problem. The program turns the caps lock on by default, and it can't be changed by just pressing the caps lock key. But the code of the program was only built to recognise lowercase character inputs, which is why Squidge is unable to move. The poke turns the caps lock off. So you use break to get into the game's code, enter poke 23658,0, go to 1, and look, we can play Squidge! Hooray! So was it worth doing all of this just to get the game working? <laughs> well, what do you think? It's grim. Squidge is possibly the slowest moving player character ever, he barely moves a millimetre every second. And the game itself is basically a maze, with a couple of enemies that you have to shoot before you can move along. And that's it, pretty much. I say shoot, but Squidge doesn't even fire any frickin' bullets. The enemies just die. That's all you do until you find the treasure or food or whatever it is that you need. It's like a crippled version of Sable Wolf. I'm not sure if I've ever played anything else that's this tedious, and I've certainly not played anything that's this badly made. Even without the whole movement issue, there's no doubt that it's pretty much the worst Spectrum game around. Forget 1.65 out of 10, the only number this is worthy of is 6. Of the best. It should be noted, by the way, that in most every other Specky game, you cannot simply use break to get into the code like that. But this game is special. I'll tell you why shortly. Of course, we're not finished here, there's plenty more. You might be wondering how on earth this game even got out. So here goes. The author of Squidge is someone named Jason Creighton, and this is the only game he's credited on. The game itself was released by The Powerhouse, who I suppose could be described as a second division specy publisher. They aren't anywhere near the likes of, say, Ocean, Firebird or Elite. Apparently things went down like this. Creighton had a contract to deliver the game, but then had a falling out with another guy on staff and told the company to get stuffed. They continued to bug him for the game, because he was under contract after all, and eventually he knocked up something utterly shite in about 40 hours, chucked it their way, got 250 quid for it, and soldered off. He was as surprised as anyone when the game was actually released, considering there was a clause in the contract where the company reserved the right to not release the finished game if it was of low quality. This all comes from a review of the game that Creighton apparently put up on another specky site, and has been saved to the internet for posterity. It should be said that obviously this isn't an unbiased source, it pretty much throws all the blame on the powerhouse. He also says that the issue of controlling the game is one with emulators, not the game. There are people who own copies of Squidge and have loaded them onto a real specky, and they can confirm that the issue exists on a spectrum, and is therefore nothing to do with emulation. By the way, it's not that difficult to look at the code itself. You use break to get into the code, and then you can scroll through it by using list. And even to my fairly untrained eyes, the code itself is clearly horrendous. A shocking mess of ifs, go-tos, and lets that's quite remarkably inefficient. No wonder the controls didn't work. I'm guessing none of this was tested at any point by anyone. Anyway, if you're unfamiliar well, this is what bad code looks like. This also means that yes, the game is written entirely in BASIC, which is basically starter code and a common sign that the game you're playing is horrific. There are some good games written entirely in BASIC, but many bad ones. And that's not all. It's actually written in something called Laser BASIC, a third-party BASIC coding utility that was distributed by Ocean. Now the thing with Laser Basic, or indeed any Basic, is that for a game to actually work without it, it needs to be compiled into machine code. Which this obviously isn't, and that's why you can just get into the code using Break. So what does that mean? It means that Squidge basically comes with Laser Basic's binaries on the tape too. 
For the price of a shit game, you can get a copy of a basic utility that costs £15 absolutely free. <laughs> this is of course highly illegal. Presumably the only reason that no one got sued the piss out of is because the game was so obscure and disappeared so fast that nobody at Ocean noticed. Needless to say, Squidge did not set the shelves on fire and actually wasn't even reviewed by any of the Spectrum magazines. Short of a tiny mention in the news section of the April 87 Your Sinclair, it wasn't covered at all. But that's the level we're at here. I've looked at some seriously incompetent fins in my time, but this well and truly takes the biscuit and shits on it from the sky. By far the most incompetent fin I have ever looked at. Who's to blame? <laughs> Everyone's to blame. And we're still not done. Because as it turns out, Squidge isn't just a Spectrum game. This game also came out on the Commodore 64 and the Commodore 16. In fact, let's refer to the Specky in there again. Those screenshots don't exactly look like the Specky game we just covered, do they? Well, they're not. That's the C64 version. Note the small point in the corner. Screenshots may vary from your version. Now this was not uncommon, you can find variations on this in the inlays of many games that came out on multiple platforms, usually because 95% of the time no one would dream of using a specky screenshot if they could use a C64 or Amstrad one instead. They are more colourful after all. Anyway, here's Squidge on the C64. Interestingly, this was handled by one Jason Kendall, not Creighton, who does have a couple of other credits. Is it a bad game? Yes. But it's not completely broken, you can play this one. My reckoning is this, the C64 version could well have been the original one that other versions were based on. Is it possible accounting for taken names and what have you, that Jason's Kendall and Creighton are the same person? Maybe, but I doubt it. Firstly because of the quality of this game compared to the specky one, and secondly because the C16 version was handled by yet another person who wasn't named Jason. Maybe these two Jasons had a big fist fight over a differing artistic vision of just what Squidge should be. <laughs> Who knows. Just another mystery from the annals of 80s UK computer game development, and one that hopefully you've enjoyed seeing me look at. I'm a firm believer in the power of the spectrum, it can match anything else in every department. Seriously, I mean, when it comes to terrible games, <laughs> that's most certainly true. I think for now though it's time to relax with something that's a bit more, well, quality. Bye for now. Many thanks for watching this video on the almighty Scritch, quite possibly the worst game ever made. If you like the video then do consider liking it, subscribing to the channel, following me on my social media and supporting me on Patreon. Right, as ever, there's a whole bunch of people to thank. Seth Robinson, Jason Leach, Horo Grizzly Bar, Ian Roberts, Drew Briggs, Grayfin Blackpaw, Ben Coker, Martin Pataki, Taylor Armand, Mark Johnston, Twisted Squote, Mitchell Mann, Simon Gulliver, Andy Capt, Andrew Dalton, Johan Eriksson, David Page, Conformist, Jake Elwich, L. O'Brien, Keith Barlow, Peter Sidorn, Grant Butler, Vichard D, Tiago Pereira dos Santos Silva dos Santos Silva, Ola Forbean, Dragon Sexmaster, Joel Hartman, Filter Prog, Jamie Hampshire, Romeo, Lee Norris, Tim Lintz, Robert Kelly, Lotaro Oino, Chris, Mark Brinton, Jan Mahust, Craig Nellist, James Malloy, John Davenport, Olaf Johnson, James Halliday, Marco, Richard Barrow, Hagenator, Radek, Ken Barraclough, Alvaro Gonzalez, Stephen Hornsby, Jan Best, Robin Banks, Dan Wasco, Christian Earnshaw, Kev Gilmore, Alexander Green, Greg Olson, Mark Johnson, Stuart Ashen, James Id, Novel, Gerard Morris, Mike Siegler, Mark Brooks, Jan Velton, Gianni Jaquetta, Thomas Daniels, Lee Harris, Russell Hugo, Paolo Leary, Graham Kamak, Scott Mitten, Nicole Ketchum, Ninth Demon, and John Ezell. Thank you so much for your constant, continued and most welcome support. You are all very much loved. Next time I think we'll be having another American documentary style video, a little look at IBM and how they won the uh, business computer wars. That should be quite good. But until then I shall see you on the other side so wherever you are and whoever you be, have a good one, take care and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.